huh? Whoa, hey guys, we're under attack! Prepare to defend your homeland from the dastardly uh, balloons? Sentient balloons? Is this a real danger we have to react to? Well, if nothing else, this has to be the enemy with the most balls anyone has ever faced. I suppose we're trying to prevent some kind of environmental catastrophe? You know, too much plastic buildup? Okay then, to start off, the best way to prevent all this plastic entering our habitat is to throw multiple times the same amount of metal at the approaching balloons in the form of darts, saw blades and various other sharp things. Let's do this! Bloons Tower Defense games are, as the name suggests, a fine example of the tower defense genre of games. I've played a great number of them, but this is technically the only pure tower defense game in my top 100 list. Most of them are fun for a while, but for me they somehow lose interest once you know all the towers and have played all the levels. The Bloon series games are an exception for me personally, and this sixth installment will represent the series of games, as I have fond memories of each of them, especially since Bloon's Tower Defense 4. I think it's because these games have such complexity and depth, and extremely well-designed levels, but we'll get to all that in a minute. If you're unfamiliar with the tower defense genre, here's a short introduction to the basic idea. Attackers approach from a set point or multiple points on the game area, and they follow a path or multiple paths to get to their destination. Whenever an attacker reaches their destination, you lose a life, and there's a limited amount of lives. You can pay in-game cash for more lives, but that's cheating. The more twisty the roads are, the easier the level typically is, because the balloons take a longer time to travel. Intersections help out a lot too. Any potential sight blockers work as cover for the attackers, which makes organizing a good defense harder. Your objective is to destroy the attacker before they get to their destination. You do this by placing towers, or in this case monkeys, along the path which attack the balloons as they pass by. Every available monkey type has an initial range, attack type, or perhaps a special ability. To oversimplify, some are better at attacking strong single targets, others are better against large groups. You win the game if you survive for a set amount of increasingly difficult waves of attackers, which become more intense and complicated towards the end. Harder difficulty settings have more waves, and your monkeys are more expensive to place and upgrade to become more powerful at popping balloons. You gain a bit of money each time you pop a balloon, and there's also a small bonus at the end of each wave. Let's take a look at what exactly we are up against, the types of monkeys we have at our disposal, as well as some of the tactics we can employ. The enemy balloons come in a huge variety of types, indicated by their colors. The weakest basic balloon is red, and moves rather slowly. You can pop it by damaging it just one time. Next up are the blue balloons, which move a bit faster. They also pop from just one hit, but contain a red balloon inside of them, which comes out when the blue balloon is popped. All the stronger balloons are layered in the same fashion. Green balloons contain a blue balloon, yellow balloons contain a green balloon, pink balloons contain a yellow balloon, but after that it gets a bit more intricate. Now, basic dart monkeys attack in a straight line, and their darts can be upgraded to pierce. They are at their most effective when placed so that their darts travel along the path for at least a short distance, so each shot hits multiple targets. It's also important to consider the track layout though. If you can place the monkey in a spot where it can attack the balloons multiple times on their way, that increases the tower's pop count drastically. Now the boomerang monkey is better suited to hit large groups traveling in an arc or an intersection, and can be upgraded to pierce like crazy. The ice monkey has a short radius and attacks quite slow, but it freezes the balloons it touches for a brief moment. Later it can be upgraded to bring the balloon speed down by a lot for an extended time. There's a downside to it as well. The basic darts and other small sharp objects cannot pop a balloon that's currently frozen. That's why you'll need upgrades, like the fire boomerang. The glue gunner has a similar purpose, as it slows down a smaller amount of balloons as they pass by, but can be upgraded to slow down even more balloons at a time. 
It can also be upgraded to soak through all the layers of the balloons and even be corrosive, slowly peeling off layers of the balloons as they travel. These type of crowd control monkeys give the other monkeys time to chew down on the remaining balloons. The game sometimes rewards you with these insta monkeys that already have some upgrades out of the box. There are also powers like road spikes that you can place at the end of the path to pop out a few runaway balloons that get through. But these cost in-game currency, not the type you gain during levels while popping balloons. I haven't used insta monkeys or powers because somehow I also feel like they are cheating. I think the main reason is because I would like to be able to infinitely replicate the strategy I am employing and if I use powers I will go broke really quickly and have to rely on the options that are available without the special currencies. Alright, now there are some special balloons headed our way, like the camo balloons. They can only be detected by monkeys that have a special ability or an upgrade. Some monkeys can be upgraded to reveal the balloons to other monkeys in various ways. There's also regrowth balloons that slowly reconstruct layers for themselves if they're not constantly receiving damage. They might be using flex tape, I mean that probably would work. Now we're getting heavy with these special balloons. There's purple balloons that are immune to fire, energy and plasma type of attacks. These exist mostly to prevent you from selling your weaker dart towers and only relying on strong, heavily upgraded advanced monkey types. There's also black balloons that are immune to explosive damage, like cannons and mortars. White balloons are immune to freezing, and lead balloons are immune to sharp objects. I think these lead balloons must be wrapped in fiber fix. Heaven help those darts! As you can see, all of these special balloons have other balloons stored inside of them as well, so they start to take a hefty amount of hits to take down completely. To finish out the list of balloon types, there are also zebra balloons, which combine the strengths of black and white balloons, and split into a white and a black balloon. Then there's rainbow balloons, which split into two zebra balloons, and finally ceramic balloons, which take 10 hits to break and split into two rainbow balloons. It takes a total of 104 hits to destroy a ceramic balloon and everything that comes out of it. Don't forget, these two can be camo or regrowth versions, and all the balloons inside of them share these bonuses. Luckily, the monkeys have more tricks up their sleeve. Some monkey types, like the sniper, can pop several layers of a balloon with each shot. They can be upgraded to even destroy a full ceramic balloon with every shot. You can choose whether the monkey targets the balloon that's closest to the end of the path, the strongest balloon, or even the balloon that's earliest along the track it can reach. For example, the sniper benefits from shooting strong targets, because otherwise it's just wasting its shots on balloons with less layers left. The composition of each wave is always the same, regardless of which map you're in. So for example, wave 17 will always consist of 12 yellow regrowth balloons. You can even memorize each wave fully to have a massive advantage, always knowing how much of each type of damage you need. The big finisher for easy difficulty on each stage is the MOAB, or Massive Ornery Air Blink. It's a zeppelin looking thing and it takes 200 hits before it's destroyed, and out comes 4 ceramic balloons. These invaders are starting to be a bit more of a serious threat. Mark my words, in the next installment we will be defending ourselves from sentient balloon animals. So what kind of things can you do in Balloons Tower Defense 6 besides listen to these jazzy Caribbean music vibes? Well, there's a heap of levels of varying complexity. You could try and finish all of them with all difficulties and special rule stipulations that are available. There are special game modes like the Odyssey event in which you build up your assortment of available towers for each run. There are seasonal collection events where you try to acquire special currencies to buy seasonal rewards. There are race events and daily quests and even a co-op mode to design defenses together with your friend. You can slowly but permanently level up your individual monkey types as you use them in the game, unlocking more powerful upgrades for them. The final upgrades border on the mass destruction scale. Then there's monkey knowledge, kind of permanent minor buffs for all your monkeys. 
There's also the heroes which you can unlock. They're just like other monkey defenders are, except they can't be upgraded. Instead, they level up as they pop balloons and gain experience and new abilities like an RPG character, starting from level 1 in each game. There's many ways to play balloons games, but I'll show a couple more things which I especially like to do. First off, make your own challenges. After I had played this game for quite a long time, I had a feel for how difficult many of the stages were. I specifically decided to pick the advanced cargo level, but as an extra challenge, try to make it through on hard difficulty, but no hero, no continues, and no insta monkeys or powers. It's a level that transforms at the end of wave 39, making the defense planning a lot more intricate. This took me about 20 hours to succeed in, in game time. I'm sure this is easy for balloon popping gurus, but I'm glad to say I managed to pull this off with only what I've learned from playing this game myself. I tried many, many different strategies without success while picking up more ideas on what to improve for the next attempt. Figuring out wave by wave how I could get by without spending any extra money on useless things. Instead I focused on how to build these monkey farms and upgrade them as early as possible. They produce more dollars to spend on buying and upgrading the other monkeys. I had things practiced down to being able to upgrade monkeys in the middle of waves on a strict timer just to survive with barely a few lives left. On harder difficulties there's already some crazy powerful new balloons in play, like the BFBs or Brutal Floating Behemoths, which take 700 hits to destroy and have 4 MOABs in them. Hard difficulty has 80 waves, and the last real hurdle for me was wave 77. There's just a massive bunch of BFBs and MOABs that charge out all at once, and it kept killing me over and over. Even the final wave didn't prove as difficult by comparison, even though it had what's called a ZOMG or Zeppelin of Mighty Gargantuanus in it. I managed to repeatedly stun it with snipers, even before it appeared on the screen, and even though it broke into 4 BFBs, it didn't stand a chance. Challenges like this are awesome when you finally figure out a good strategy and just barely pull off a victory. Finally, there's the free play mode. You enter free play when you finish a stage on any difficulty. The game allows you to keep going into absolutely stupefying numbers of waves. I'm not really good at it, the furthest I've gotten to is wave 209. After the ZOMG, there's still the DDTs or the Dark Dirigible Titans and the BADs or Big Airships of Doom. Destroying one of these BADs is equivalent to popping 55,760 red balloons. Just take a look at this madness. Feels like I'm doing some kind of freaky benchmark, my computer is actually struggling a bit. I can't even find my damn mouse cursor. Be right back after a quick photosensitivity seizure. The noise is just deafening, I can't even hear myself thinking anymore, this is nuts! Whew, is it over? I think we're dead man, the balloons got through. Well, today the mightiest of monkeys, the one true monkey god, claimed over 160 million balloon lives. Never forget. Bloons is a game series I'm going to keep coming back to for casual fun and tough challenges. It certainly has an addicting quality to it. Pop pop pop, just keep on popping. But for now, I have to try to pry myself away from it again, because I can already feel the pull of the next game on the list. P.S. I'm not buying the next Bloons game unless there is one tower based on the Pygmy Marmoset. Devs, please.